So, I know I haven't posted any Flash videos as of recently and I've got my reasons. I'm gonna discuss those reasons on a future video. So for the time being, welcome back guys, let's talk some Flash thoughts and theories. So almost a year ago, a little bit short of that, I've posted my original timeline theory that there is no original timeline. Now I'm not going to talk about that on this video, but you could review the original theory video for the no original timeline theory that I posted a year ago in order to understand how the events from season 2 connect to the events from season 1. So I'm going to head right away into discussing this new theory, or what I prefer to call an explanation, how does Eobard Thon make it back every time, is it really a time remnant thing? I mean yes, that is the explanation the show gives at times, but does it really make all that much sense? Is there an explanation that would make a lot more sense than that one? I mean the explanations on the Flash are not really consistent, not the ones for Eobard Thon, but there are a lot of facts that get introduced on the series that would give another, a totally different explanation to the fact that Eobard Thon keeps coming back. There is as well the fact that sometimes the explanation given to us, this time remnant explanation which is basically a creation of the series, there is no base for it in the comics, ends up not making a lot of sense. So how does Eobard Thon make it back every single time? Let's see. So this theory was originally introduced by the Professor Zoom channel, the one previously known as Reverse Fuhrer, and after having discussions with him, he's asked me to put this theory on a video and kind of put my spin on it, my thoughts on it. So yeah, this is my version of the theory. So let us just go in order of events, and number one, the events of the Reverse Flash Returns on Season 2. Those are the very first events in the timeline of Eobard Thon. So as at this state, he does arrive on Season 2, attacks Christina McGee, and tries to find out where the Flash is, what time he's from, he does state that clearly. Guess what Flash, I know what time period you're from. So right after that comes number two, an analysis of the period that the Flash is from, understanding the crisis event from 2024, the very same event that post the killing of his mother he keeps checking the news about in order to make sure that it still happened, for whatever reason, possibly a point of reference. That research and analysis part of course happened off camera, so we never really saw it happen. But what we do know is that Eobard Thon did his research and he did it well. But that brings us to number 3, Eobard Thon traveling to the past where Barry is still a child and killing Barry Allen's mother. Now that is followed by the realization we come to later on on season 1 that he's stuck in this time period and that his only way to leave this time period ends up being the creation of the very same superhero, The Flash, that he intended to start with to erase from the timeline. Number four, becoming the imposter, taking the shape, form and body of Harrison Wells and becoming just that, building up Star Labs or making sure that Star Labs develops in the way that creates the Flash in 2013 and thus creating the Flash in 2013. So far so good, so far this is just Eubar Thon, no time remnants, nothing. The explanation on season 2 by Harrison Wells, he's a timeline remnant, that makes no sense, he's just the past self of the Harrison Wells we knew from season 1 doing his research, he's just a time traveler rather than a time remnant. Number 5, the explosion of the particle accelerator which pretty much spreads dark matter all over the city, turning someone like Barry Allen into a metahuman, into the Flash. Number 6, the life of Eobard Thon as Harrison Wells throughout the events of season 1 and number 7, Eddie shooting himself in order to erase this evil descendant of his from existence. That leads up to the disintegration of Eobard Thon and he ends up in the Speed Force or at least we assumed he ended up in the Speed Force because that is supposedly where every dead speedster ends up going. But number 8, the creation of Flashpoint, so pretty much that is no timeline remnant or time remnant as people did assume, that's pretty much Eobard Thon being taken out of the timeline, creating a new branching in the timeline and creating Flashpoint. Now because this change has been created, during Flashpoint Eddie Thon would never have to shoot himself and hence Eubart Thon would easily survive his imprisonment unchased by the Black Flash. The Black Flash as well, he's not created in this Flashpoint timeline because Barry never actually had to face off with none other than Hunter Zolomon. Number 9, because of the many problems with Flashpoint, you know, Barry losing his powers, his speed, Barry losing his memories, Barry losing everything pretty Pretty much, he does ask Eobard Thon to help him, take him back in time and reenact the murder of his mother, and that is exactly what happens over there. And once that happens, everything has changed, that's a new branching in the timeline and we've got no Eobard Wells, none whatsoever. So logically, the thing that would happen over here is that Flashpoint Reverse Flash and post Flashpoint Reverse Flash, the one who just killed Barry's mother would have to reenact the entire events of Season 1, making sure that Eobard Wells happens, making sure that he ends up getting erased from the timeline. This time around though, and 
due to the ripple effects through time, he does make a few decisions, a few different decisions, unknowingly to him, but none of them make a huge difference when it comes to the final outcome, like for example, constructing the speed lab. That was a new decision that he did make during his reenacted tenure as head of Star Labs. Number 10, this is where I start deviating a little bit from Reverse Fuhrer's theory. He's dead, he's erased from the timeline, no matter what, he does end up in the Speed Force. But on the other hand, Reverse Fuhrer kept jumping through hoops in order to make sure that this made sense, like he modified his chest emblem to disappear within the Speed Force, or he used a secret Tachyon portal. That is not really required, he did vanish into the Speed Force in his reenactment of the events, only this time around he did have a plan. Number 11, going back to the final moments of Flashpoint, the Eubart Thon version, the Flashpoint version that helped Barry go back in time and fix the timeline, had a beard, an unshaved beard. That's just natural when you've been imprisoned for so long and you didn't have shaving tools. But to our surprise, he didn't have that beard when he returned Barry Allen to Joe West's door. So he went back in time, reenacted the murder of Nora Allen, couldn't run in time anymore as per the events of season 1. So he spent his life as Eubard Walls, just like he did the first time around, and then had a future version of himself, go back in time, pick Barry Allen, and return him back to 2016. Now that would definitely make a lot more sense than he went back in time, killed Nora Allen, took a break to get a shave and a haircut, and then took Barry Allen to 2016. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially when you consider that he knew that things were back to normal for him, but not really back to normal for Barry. I mean, he had future knowledge that he would not have otherwise had. So number 12, this post-Flashpoint version of Eobard Thawne that returned Barry to his door existed post his erasal from the timeline by Eddie Thawne. And this is pretty much the very same version that moves on to Legends of Tomorrow during the events of the same season of The Flash. Now because, and I code the reverse Fuhrer over here, he's in a state of existence and non-existence, the Black Flash is sent after him by none other than the Speed Force to get him back into the Speed Force. So this time around he knew his future, he knew he would be killed, he planned it all to the letter, and he knew how to escape the Speed Force, but not without a price, and in this case it was the Black Flash following him all the way through. Now it is the same Eobard Thawne from the very beginning of this video, no timeline remnants, no time remnants, nothing. So once again let's review our information real quick. Eobard Thawne travels from the future to the events of Season 2, found out where the Flash exists, or when the Flash exists. He traveled to the events of Season 1, killed Nora Allen, spent his life as Harrison Wells, ended up being erased from the timeline by none other than Eddie Thawne. Barry traveled to the past at the end of Season 2, stopped him from killing his mother, created Flashpoint, asked for his help in order to erase Flashpoint or undo Flashpoint. Eobard Thawne took him back in time, spent his life as Harrison Wells because he could no longer travel back in time, ended up dead at the hands of Eddie Thawne, had a foolproof plan to make his escape out of the Speed Force, except he did not account for the Black Flash. As soon as he came out of the Speed Force, he went back to the murder scene of Nora Allen, took Barry Allen to the future, to the very same moment that Barry Allen left to start with in order to create Flashpoint. But now he moves on to Legends of Tomorrow, where number 13, he teams up with Damien Dark and Malcolm Merlin in order to face off with the Legends. His main goal this time around is to get the Spear of Destiny, to make sure that he changes his own destiny, his own fate, to make sure that history is rewritten and he's never erased from the timeline. Now your biggest proof over here that this version of Eobard Thawne is the very same Eobard Thawne from season 1 is that conversation on Legends that he has with Ray Palmer when they're kinda stuck in space. He reminisces over working with fellow scientists. He mentions Caitlin and Sisko and the work he did with them, so he's pretty much referencing the events of Season 1 of The Flash. But number 14, we end up seeing him disintegrate once again using the very same visual effect from Season 1 as the Black Flash gets to him at the very end of Season 2 of Legends of Tomorrow and takes him back into the Speed Force. But number 15, we know that the Black Flash is a goner based on the finale of Season 3 of The Flash, you know the final showdown between Barry Allen and Savitar. So with the Grim Reaper of Speedsters dead, it is pretty easy for Eobard Thawne to reenact his escape from the Speed Force for a second time over and this time he appears in the 2017-2018 crossover event of the Arrowverse. He moves on to another universe, starts working with the Nazis of Earth-X and brings on the invasion to our universe. This time around though, and just like the death of the Grim Reaper of Speedsters, the Black Flash did facilitate his second escape, it is facilitating him moving freely, he's no longer running for his life, he could run around even though in a state of existence and non-existence. But in the very end, the smartest speedster villain the comic books have ever known, and the smartest speedster villain the Arrowverse has ever known, is running around freely, and he's gonna make a return in the future, and that's what he promises Barry at the very end of the crossover event. Now I did post a video right after the crossover event about his return and how he would return, and what event from the comic 
comics would that represent? I will be linking that on the end screen to this video, but for the time being let me know in the comments what you think of this theory, let me know if you do have any objections to the aspects of this theory, and let me know if you think this is a better explainer for the continuous existence of Eobard Thawne. Let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, and if that were to be the case, you could always subscribe and enable notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until the next video of mine that you end up tuning in for, thank you all for tuning in and have a great day.